everything in the galaxy needs to come with us, you know. See you. About time you showed up. All right, I want to know what's going on. I've been trying to get Delgado's attention for, oh, I don't know, three years now. And what do I get? Nothing but radio silence. Then out of nowhere, just when Neva and I are closing in on a huge score of our own, Delgado orders me to help you out. Because the only way to achieve a win is by agreeing to play the game in the first place. Worst case scenario, I don't make the fleet, but I end up a couple thousand credits richer. 
That's almost a, a win-win, don't you think? Oh, sure, sure. First a tour, followed by a formal dinner at the captain's table. Let's get one thing straight. You're here for business, not for a vacation. So let's start by talking about Delgado's sudden olive branch. Well, I'll be damned. Someone from the fleet finally agrees with me about something. It's a goddamn miracle. So Neva's message said you were here for Dombrowski. Was that all she sent you here to do? Or was there something else you were sent here to steal? Don't play games with me. We both know pinging a message back and forth to the key is going to take longer than we have to do this job. We're supposed to be working together on every part of this. So, you're gonna tell me what else you're here for or not? Oh, really? Did she now? I can't believe she's trying to cut me out of this deal. Without me, the award never would have ended up here in the first place. I spent months manipulating the Turan Preservation Society to hosting their gala affair aboard the Siren of the Stars. I had to arrange the event to make sure that the award was aboard the ship. Neva said she'd do the rest. When I got a message about Dubrovsky, I assumed she'd be tagging along to steal the award. But looks like uh, she sent you in her place. That would imply that Neva has a good side to begin with. Fine, I'll help. But you're doing all the legwork, and I'm still taking my cut of the payout. Anyway, we'll get to that later. First, we have a much bigger fish to fry. So why are you targeting a Gall Bank exec anyway? Not exactly your average Crimson Fleet prey. Why the interest? Merchant vessels, transport, supply convoys, mining settlements, you get the picture. But taking on a megacorp, that's a really big deal. Something the Crimson Fleet stayed away from in the past. Sounds to me like Delgado's either getting desperate, or this is leading to an even bigger score down the road. Playing it safe for now, okay. I can respect that. But let's make one thing clear. If I'm gonna stick my neck out by helping you get near Domprosky, I want something in return. It would seem we have little choice in the matter. We should hear him out. You're insulting my intelligence. Delgado wouldn't send you all the way out here without specifically telling you what you're allowed to offer. I'll tell you what, though. I'm gonna make this extremely inexpensive for you. In fact, you don't have to offer me a single credit. I don't want money. I want back into the Crimson Fleet. It's as simple as that. You'd better, or you're gonna have to find another Gal Bank executive. As long as Dombrowski's on the ship, he's all mine. Of course I do. But who wants to settle for a one-time payout? I prefer to play the long game. You see, getting my ass back into the fleet means I regain access to Shinya Boss. And that's as good as an endless stream of credits. <sighs> Fine. You want to play it that way and suit yourself. Dombrowski's a full-timer aboard the Siren of the Stars. Probably spends more time cruising the space lanes than actually working. Fortunately, the Siren is hosting the Tehran Preservation Society charity gala. Larry won't be able to resist showing off his VIP clout. To get what you need, you're gonna have to attend the gala. 
talk to his fellow philanthropists and dig up some dirt. Oh no. Is shooting everyone an option? Alternately shooting ourselves to avoid it? Someone with enough disposable income to afford a permanent six-figure cabin aboard one of Trident's uh, finest space liners. Consider it similar to owning a luxury mobile vacation home. Play thing for the wealthy, you get the gist. The event's a complete sham. Bunch of rich snobs getting together and throwing a party for themselves. These people couldn't give a damn about Tehran Preservation or any other charity for that matter. <laughs> yeah, well, lucky for you, it's not black tie, so you'll be fine. This card will allow you to access the Starview Ballroom. If you need my help, I'll be relaxing in one of the upper level lounges. Head inside and mingle with the crowd. No one likes Dombrowski, so they'll be more than happy to share his dirty secrets. He's a VIP executive, which means he either worked really, really hard using blood, sweat, and tears to make the arduous climb to the top, or he backstabbed, lied, cheated, and betrayed his way up the corporate ladder. From what I've heard, it's the second option. Now you're speaking my language. Oh, there's one last thing. Trident equips all of their Starliners with the latest acoustic threat detection. Meaning that you lose patience and kill anyone aboard the ship, security will be alerted and all hell will break loose. Anyway, I suppose that's enough to get you started. Good luck. They claim their goal is to celebrate the soul of the Earth, the culture, the people, and the ideals of the past. In their minds, Earth is now dead, which is why they feel that preservation of its remaining aspects is so important. In reality, this is what happens when folks with far too much time and far too much money get together to make themselves feel like they're contributing to society. You seriously need to ask? Okay, I'll give you two reasons. First, Gold Bank protects their own. Kill Dombrowski, and they send Ecliptic after every Crimson Fleet ship they can find. Not something Delgado wants, I suspect. And second, you up a Gal Bank employee in every single Gal Bank facility in the settled systems will triple their security. I'm gonna guess that won't help with whatever your plans are regarding Gal Bank, now will it? As long as you remember that I'm getting paid my cut, I'll help you with anything you want. What's the status of your plan? I want to Neva strip down a UC security ship and uh, sell the parts back to the UC through a shell company. If that doesn't put your concerns to rest, I don't know what will. Now tell me, what about the status of your plan? How can I help? Okay, then let me point you to the person in charge of the award. Her name's Sheila Holbrook, and you can probably find her in the Starview Ballroom. I'd press her to reveal where the award's hidden, and we can go from there. And if you're thinking of pulling the trigger on poor Miss Holbrook, remember that any gunfire is gonna set off the ship's alarms. Oh, and while you're at the gala, avoid the canapes. They're frozen, not fresh. Trident must have spent a fortune equipping this ship with triple redundancy in almost every internal system. These newer vessels more or less run autonomously, which doesn't leave much for the crew to do around here.
Captain Rokov is one of the most easygoing COs I've ever worked under. In fact, he doesn't act much like a captain at all. These newer vessels more or less run autonomously. It doesn't take much to the Please try not to alert anyone to what you're doing. Nothing quite like the view for the stuff you borrow. It's breathtaking. Every day that I wake up in my bunk, I count my blessings to have been posted to a ship like the Siren of the Stars. Shh, Lisa. Can't hear the engines, can you? You're not going to find better tuned engines anywhere else in the settled systems. Trident must have spent a fortune equipping this ship. Triple redundancy in almost every internal system. This is one of Trident's top of the systems. You're a guest of Captain Rokov, right? Welcome aboard. Captain Rokov said you're allowed in any of the crew-specific areas. Just don't touch anything, please. Between you and me, the best part of my job is getting a crack at all of the leftovers from the dining area buffets. Captain Rokov is one of the most easygoing CEOs I've ever worked under. In fact, he doesn't act much like a captain at all. particular cruise run several times, and I can assure you that the route is quite safe. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Is this important? I don't have a lot of time for idle nonsense. Yes, I'm extremely busy preparing for the award ceremony, so this better be important. Probably in a few days. I don't want the award transfer to actually occur until we're safely in orbit at our destination. Of course, if I keep getting interrupted, the ceremony might never take place at all. 
Not at all. I was assured that this particular ship was outfitted with the absolute latest in cutting-edge security. I am completely confident that Trident Luxury Lines will keep all of us safe. Yes, I am. Actually, I've been entrusted with the transfer of the award for the last seven of its nine years. Why do you ask? Well, the Earth Savior Award is one of a kind. The Blue Diamonds alone are irreplaceable. Since we can't produce a new award every year, it's instead passed from one recipient to the next. I supervise the transfer and make certain that there's ample security during transport and at the destination. During my tenure? Oh, certainly not. There was an unfortunate incident where my predecessor attempted to sell the award to the highest bidder, but that was quickly resolved. Needless to say, they'll be spending the rest of their life in a UC prison. Yes, it's quite marvelous, isn't it? Absolutely priceless. Alas, I'm afraid you'll just have to wait for the ceremony to see it in all its glory. It's far too valuable to be left anywhere else except the master safe located at the purser's office. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have much more important things on my agenda than to speak to the likes of you. So what brings you aboard? For the safety of everyone aboard, please be certain you don't interfere with any of the crew or security members of our vessel. Any complaints about your crews should be directed to one of the staff. is not the very definition of decadence. I do not know what is. If you have any little ones aboard, story time with Serena will be held in the ship's library this evening. Let me know if your voyage is unsatisfactory in any way. Welcome to the purser's office. I'm Chief Purser Murata. How can I be of assistance today? Oh, absolutely! The safe is magnetically sealed and shielded with multiple layers of fully damage-resistant, vacuum-proof plating. In the unlikely event our vessel is boarded and the threat detection alarm is triggered, the safe will be permanently sealed until it reaches port. In the even more unlikely event, this ship is destroyed. We can assure you that your loved ones will be able to recover your goods from the wreckage. So, as you can imagine, your property will be completely secure until you decide to retrieve them from our safe. An excellent question. My responsibilities include all of the Siren's financial, customs and commercial goods transfers. Honestly, I really enjoy the work. I get to meet people at every port of call instead of being constantly stuck below decks. I've only seen it briefly myself, but I can assure you that it's quite lovely. Unfortunately, the item is locked inside of our safe, which can only be accessed by presenting an appropriate claim ID. Is there anything else I can assist you with today? Well, if you change your mind, I'll be here. Have a wonderful trip. I'm sorry. It's against Trident policy to discuss our personal feelings towards a fellow crewmate. I don't want to lose my job. Why should I tell you? Maybe. Need to think about it. 
not happening. Maybe we can still work something out. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. All right, but you didn't hear this from me. Do you understand? I don't want to lose my job. I like Captain Rokov, but I think he's mixed up with some very dangerous people. I was bringing some paperwork to his quarters one day, and I found a slate with a message he received from someone named Delgado. That would normally be fine, but the message mentions the Crimson Fleet as in pirates. Can you believe it? If you want to grab it, the slate should still be in his quarters. Somewhere. Please let me know if there's anything I can do to make you stay more comfortable. Society? Must you continue these unwelcome interruptions? I'm a very busy woman. Excuse me? And why in goodness name would I do something as foolish as that? And why in goodness name would I possibly agree to that ridiculous demand? Maybe. Need to think about it. Oh, just take the damn thing already. Listen, maybe you can keep this between us. If the award goes missing, there's no need for the insurance company to get involved. Please remember to obey all posted safety and mustering instructions. This ship is any indication? I imagine there is an incredible amount of wealth stored in there right now. your acquaintance. Quite a lovely Starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, eh? I heard he uses Galbank's VIP suite on the Siren of the Stars almost monthly. Does the man ever do any real work? I've already told you everything I know about him. Even if I was offered the award, I wouldn't take it. Can you imagine the security nightmare I'd have to deal with? No, thank you. Donations to the society can be debited from my bank account on a monthly basis. I barely have to lift a finger to help. <laughs> well, that was boring. If you wish to have a drink at any of our lounges, be sure to present your bank pass to have the course deducted from your account. So, 
What brings you aboard? Hello? Are you a member of the Society? The considerable amounts of cash that Dombrowski donates is the only reason we allow him to attend Society functions. That award is such a joke. It's for members of the Society to pat their own backs for spending the most money on the cause. When you join, they send you a small chunk of rock from the Earth itself. I keep mine on my desk. Nice to have met you. I certainly hope they decide to hold all future society events aboard a Starliner. An open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got. Here for business or pleasure? His behavior towards women is abominable. That man really ought to be ashamed of himself. I heard it's fitted with 12 internally flawless two-carat blue diamonds. Can you believe that? You don't necessarily have to be wealthy to contribute, though the minimum donation level is 5,000 credits. That's all then? Okay. That view is absolutely spectacular, isn't it? Yes, he's some kind of a top dog over at Galbank. I heard he replaced someone that was caught running a fake loan scam. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the award committee this year. The way she dotes over that glorified trophy, you'd think it was her own child. Is this about that feature SSNN ran a few years ago? I can assure you, this is a legitimate charity organization. Don't forget to donate to the cause. Have you tried the canopies? Horrid. Positively horrid. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Let's put it this way. He screwed over so many people, if he suddenly disappeared from the universe, I don't think anyone would miss him. Sheila Holbrook is chair of the award committee this year. The way she dotes over that glorified trophy, you'd think it was her own child. Not much, other than the fact that they host these wonderfully entertaining gala events every month. Don't forget to donate to the cause. The society chair has really outdone herself this time. Quite a lovely starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, eh? He's been spending a lot of time with Claudia Swist. Quality time, if you catch my meaning? I'm certain his wife doesn't know a thing about it. Nice to have met you. So, what brings you aboard? Mind moving along? I'm trying to enjoy the celebration. Yeah, uh... Can we do this later? I'm busy. I'm sorry, but unless you're reporting a security situation, I need to get back to my duties. I'm sorry. I don't believe we've met. Do I know you? Well, it appears that this cat has claws. How terrifying. I'm certain we've never been acquainted before, so I'll do you the courtesy of forewarning you about the impertinence that's to follow. When you approach me, I'd highly advise you to choose your words carefully. Otherwise, it's likely they will be your last. I think we're done here. Good day. An open bar would have been nice, but Trident's gouging us for every credit we've got.
Here for business? For pleasure. Sorry, do I know you? Look, I think you're definitely confused here. I really don't have time to have a discussion with you. My partner's waiting for me. He's a very important man. Who? <laughs> Look, can you just cut to the chase already? What's this about? His wife? Uh, oh, for the love of God. I told Larry to keep his big mouth shut, but did he listen? No. He had to impress his friends and treat me like a trophy. Look, I've been in this business for a long time, and I know how this game works, so let's skip all the banter and get it over with. What's it gonna take to make us both happy? You're not very bright, are you? I'm a grade C3 exec at Galbang. That means my credentials get me into two places, the front door and the ladies' room. If that's all you really want, you're certainly welcome to them. If I give you dirt on that son of a bitch Dombrowski, all I'm doing is endangering myself. Why would I do that? Honestly, this whole scheme has left a pit in my stomach since day one. All right, you've made your point. You know, this whole thing really pisses me off. Larry and I had the perfect scheme where thousands of credits all worked out, and then he goes and flushes the whole thing down the toilet. I do not understand. Your anger is focused on Mr. Dombrowski, but clearly the failure of this plan rests on you as well. If you had to work near him day in and day out, I think you'd understand. He's a disgusting pig, plain and simple. I'm not gonna tell you. Let's just say that I'd be sent to prison for a long time if Galbank figured it out. I didn't know who the hell you were. For all I knew, you were working for Dombrowski. It's called playing it cool. You should try it sometime. Oh, angry isn't even the right word. The plan was solid. Larry got together with myself and this other guy, Gabriel Vera. He's some big wig over at UC Security. I doctored the transactions, Larry wiped them off the system, and Vera kept the legal pressure off of us. We were scamming Galbank for months. It was going well until I discovered Larry was cheating everyone by changing each transaction in his favor before deleting them. <laughs> you won't do that. You're here because you've got some kind of side hustle in the works. If you wanted to blow the whistle, you would have boarded this ship with the authorities. I was going to confront him back on Jemison. But then he invited me on this little trip through the stars. All expenses paid, first class accommodations, the works. I figured, why not wait until I've milked him for every credit he's spending before I drop the hammer? Oh, I know he was using me. At the same time, he was saying how much he loved me. He was stringing me along and stabbing me in the back. I wish I had some. Maybe you should try talking to Gabriel Vera. He should be around here somewhere. If he doesn't want to cooperate, just mention my name. That should grab his attention. Good luck. You're gonna need it.
about a computer algorithm that basically creates a randomized number of false ghost credits that mimic the crypto key of actual credits. Then the algorithm simply passes the ghost credits to whatever legit transfers that the bank transacts. The genuine credits enter a dummy account. The best part is that I also alter the crypto keys as the real cash flows into our accounts. By the time it lands in our pockets, the credits are clean. So, on paper, it appears that all of the bank's transactions are covered when it's really just our ghosted dummy creds. <laughs> Genius, right? What do you think is going on? I'm using that gullible idiot to get what I want. If I have to squash him on my way to the top, then so be it. Let's get one thing straight. Larry Dombrowski's no saint. He deserves everything that's coming to him. Saints seem few and far between these days. Dombrowski is a piece of human garbage. He'd stab you in the back for table scraps, then stab you again to steal dessert. The plan's always been to milk the guy for everything he's worth, and then leave him in the dust. Not bad for a lowly Galbank worker drone, right? What, are you ready to damn novel? <sighs> Fine. Vera works for UC Security, so he kept a lookout on their comnet for any Galbank chatter. I guess you could call him our early warning system. And Dombrowski made sure that all of the crypto manipulation I was working on didn't turn up in Galbank's automatic audits. You need top clearance for that kind of access, so we had to cut him in, whether we liked it or not. I hope you hurt Dombrowski. Nail his ass right to the wall. Please remember to obey all public safety and mustering instructions. Quite a lovely Starliner. Nothing but the best for the society, huh? Quite an event they're throwing today, don't you think? Hello. You here for the charity event? Oh, absolutely. I'm a firm believer that attending these types of events tends to absolve one of their sins and cleanse their soul. But something tells me you're not really here to discuss the event. What did you really want to talk about? Well, I work for UC Security, meaning that business isn't exactly my area of expertise. I'm afraid I can't really help you. If you're looking for a business opportunity, you might want to check with someone else. You mean specifically? Oh, I work for the Corporate Fraud Division. We monitor all of the major megacorp financials and transactions to ensure that nothing improper occurs. You're asking a lot of strange questions. What exactly do you want? To be honest, I'm here to keep an eye on the charity event. It might not be as glamorous an assignment as a colony rescue or taking down some criminals, but anything that keeps the peace is important to me. What is this all about, anyway? Claudia sent you, did she? Look, friend, I don't know if you're just a little drunk, maybe a touch crazy, or both. Whatever you think you know about me, you're dead wrong. So back off. We both know exactly who you are. Don't test me. You have no idea how high up the chain I am with UC Security. Not only can I make you disappear, I can also make sure the settled systems forget you existed in the first place. Sure, go ahead. If it makes you feel better, you can take it right to the top of Mast. Anything you try to report will boil down to your word against mine. And since I work for UC Security, 
Who do you think people will believe? You've had your time to talk. Now piss off. That view is absolutely spectacular, isn't it? I saw your little exchange with Vera. Keep that up and I guarantee that imbecile's gonna demand that you be arrested. Oh, absolutely. He's up the ladder at UC security. Lots of pull. We have to handle this very delicately. Which is why he's threatening you. That makes sense. We need hard evidence of their scheme. But it's gonna be tricky. The problem is he's not gonna talk to you in public. We need to get Vera isolated so he'll spill everything he knows. Maybe. But if something goes wrong, and he's able to raise an alarm, we're sunk. With all of these wealthy patrons aboard, the ship is crawling with security. Yeah, that's smart. Kill Vera, or anyone else involved in his conspiracy, and then Dubrovsky heads for the hills. Besides, you really want to ace a member of UC security and have them breathing down your neck? You'll be the top story on SSNN. No. There has to be a safer way. Smart. If there's an emergency, standard practice is for all passengers to clear the decks and report to their cabins for lockdown. I think the best chance we have will be to temper with the life support sensors. Manipulate a few controls and you can fool the monitoring system into thinking there's a, a life support failure. And there you have your emergency. This is one of Trident's premier Starliners. That means it has the best of everything. Including a triple redundancy life support system. They installed a backup for the backup. Luckily for us, it will still trip an emergency and everyone will have to return to their quarters until I sound the all clear. Which I won't. Agreed. The consequences of getting it wrong would be disastrous. You don't need to know anything about the system. All you need to do is access the maintenance area and throw some switches. One more thing. If Chief Engineer Sandin gives you any trouble, tell him I'll erase that gambling debt he owes me. I prefer you use that as a last resort, but hey, what's the harm in losing a few credits when I'm on the brink of rejoining the fleet, right? Anyway, I better start packing. Things are getting hot around here, and won't be long before Trident figures out you had help. There's access to the crew section that you can reach through the uh, Starview Ballroom. Chief Sundin should be there, wasting time at his station as usual. Have fun with that guy. He's a, a real piece of work. Once you're past Sundin, just look for the room marked Environmental Control. Everything you need is inside. All passengers are instructed to immediately report to their cabins. That way we keep the halls clear and avoid a panic. Fortunately for us, all of the passenger cabin doors will automatically unlock. This is normally to ensure the crew can check cabins quickly and without interference. But in our case, it's like having an all-access pass. On the surface, he's an upstanding citizen of the United Colonies, pretty high up in UC security. Lots of clout with mast. Underneath, he's a greedy piece of garbage. Given the chance, he'd backstab you for a cred stick and pin the murder on someone else. Come to think of it, if he wasn't such a petty tyrant, he'd probably thrive with the Crimson Fleet. Remember, the moment freezing, you shut down that system, the entire ship goes into lockdown mode. Here for business or pleasure? I have... 
I wish to discuss with you. When you have time. Captain Lokov is one of the most easygoing CEOs I've ever worked under. In fact, he doesn't act much like a captain at all. Can we speak for a moment? Uh, hey, uh, uh, hold up. This area is off limits to passengers. Wait a second. You're Captain Rokov's guest, right? Didn't expect to see you down here. Sorry to give you trouble. What can I do for you? Yeah, a little. A few of the techs call this deck the dungeon. <laughs> I think you can see why. Not exactly Starliner class comfort down here. Don't get me wrong. The quiet gives me time to gather my thoughts, catch up on work, and all that, but I'd rather work on the bridge. I'm the Siren's chief engineer. Trident put me in charge of the entire tech team. We do our best to keep the ship running smoothly and efficiently. Of course, this beauty is a cutting-edge piece of spacecraft design. Almost everything has triple redundancy, like the life support system. Unfortunately, that means there's quite a bit of downtime. Could be worse, though, right? Oh, uh, sorry, that area's off limits. No exceptions. No, sorry, I'm afraid it's impossible. Trident regulations strictly prohibit anyone from entering the life support area without a valid reason. Look, I'm not trying to be a jerk here, it's just that... I could lose my job, you know? Oh, really? Well, that changes things quite a bit. Tell you what, I'm just going to step out for a bit and stretch my legs. Maybe you can hold this for me while I'm away? Feel free to look around, but don't mess with any of the controls. Much nicer in here now. Plenty of room. If you have the time, I wish to speak to you.
This ship is in a state of emergency. Please return to your cabin immediately. I was wondering if you were the cause of the shipwide emergency. It's time you stop playing games and tell me why you're here. Doesn't take a genius to deduce you're the one that's responsible. I locked on to you from the moment you entered the ballroom and I've watched you trying to clock Dombrowski. After we spoke, I had a feeling you'd pull a stunt like this. I always took him for a fool, but I can't believe he's stupid enough to have gotten mixed up with the Crimson Fleet. Still, why would I possibly want to incriminate myself by handing over any evidence? Don't act so surprised. You didn't really think I'd make a deal with Claudio or Dombrowski without having a little insurance policy of my own, did you? Huh? If I've learned anything in my years at the Corporate Fraud Division, it's always have an exit strategy. I don't know where you got that information from, but it lines up with all the troubles I've been having getting my cut from that asshole. That means my money's already gone, and Dombrowski's all going passengers. to walk away with a fortune. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't want to end up on the Crimson Fleet shit list. But if I give you that information and it falls into the wrong hands, I'll end up in jail. This is a lose-lose situation for me. Dombrowski had the authorization to wipe out records on Galbank's system without raising any red flags. I let Claudia talk me into that. She said she had him wrapped around her finger. Apparently... She was wrong. Oh, I've got everything you're gonna need. This is a one-stop shop for you. We're talking a slate loaded with dates, account numbers, ID scans, even an audio recording. <laughs> it was my little insurance policy in case the shit hit the fan. There's a solid enough trail here to send Dombrowski straight to jail. At least I walk away with something. All right. You have yourself a deal. Here, with this slate and this recording to tie it all together, you'll be able to nail his ass to the wall. He'll do whatever you want. Just remember that you promised to leave me out of it. Just because I'm helping you nail Dombrowski doesn't mean I'm turning my back on UC security. How else am I gonna ensure that he ends up behind bars when all this comes crashing down? No. You can leave me out of your merry little band of pirates, thank you very much. All I can tell you is that there's more than a few people at Mast who find Commander Akande to be a huge pain in the ass. I mean, the UC is aware that the Crimson Fleet is a problem, but it pales in comparison to the issues with the Free Star Collective. Akande's loaded with big picture ideas, but not a ton of evidence to put them into action. And frankly, it's driving my superiors crazy. Well, since Claudia has been spending time disgustingly close to Dombrowski, I think she's suffered enough. On the other hand, I've got very, very special plans for Larry. I have some friends that can, well, let's just say, take care of the problem. That's if you leave him alive, of course. We'll just have to wait and see. 
You better tell Dombrowski to run, because if you don't kill him, I will. Haven't you squeezed enough? A out sharp of contrast from the crew quarters, mm -hmm. is it not? Can we speak for a moment? I believe our business has concluded. Goodbye. be the one who's been accosting Claudia and Gabriel. I'm uncertain what you hope to accomplish here, but it appears we should rapidly enter into some sort of negotiation. You don't actually believe that I'd venture into such precarious criminal territory without a proper bird's eye view of the situation, do you? I'm uncertain why you've become entangled in this spider's web, but this situation demands swift and resolute action. <laughs> Au contraire, my misguided friend. There's a bargain that needs to be hammered out, and you will listen to the facts before we proceed. First, 
It's clear that you've obtained insider knowledge of my arrangement to defraud Galbank. The means and the method, perhaps, but not the motive. And second, I'm going to hypothesize that my compatriots are despondent All regarding their share and have assisted attention, you with please. this endeavor. Hmm? The captain has Since we're speaking and I'm not at the reporting end of a bullet, this leads me to conclude that you fashion. desire something personal from me. You may as well ask, is it necessary for the sun to set on Jemison or for one to wear a pressure suit when entering the vacuum of space? Forgive me. Sometimes I forget that I have to fraternize with people below my intellect. In blunt terms, you have compromising materials about me in your possession. The only thing I have to offer in return are my gal bank credentials. I assume that's what you've been angling for all along? Will there be much more of this? My head is starting to hurt. Obviously, that wouldn't be my preference, but I have little choice. Hmm? Though, Larry Dombrowski will be mysteriously vanishing after this cruise and possession of the credentials becomes ludicrous at that point. Well, I'm surprised you even posed that question at all. The answer is quite obvious. The last thing I'd want to do at this point is call attention to myself. Oh, it was actually a rather easy deduction to make. It's the only thing of significant value that I still have in my possession. It appears we've May reached an accord. Wait, the I'm sorry. Let me simplify that for emergency. you. It sounds like we have a deal. Oh, of course I trust you'll understand if I ask for us to avoid any further contact. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to formulate how I'm going to utterly ruin two very annoying business associates. Good day. If you have the time, I wish to speak to you. for alarm. I'm sure this is just a minor malfunction or a drill. Our security team would appreciate if you'd please shelter in your cabin during this emergency. Thank you. Well, looks like everything worked out. Just like we planned. I wish you hadn't blown away the gambling debt that Sandine owed me. But hey, you got the job done. All passengers, may I have I'm your glad one of us please. did. I'm just the hoping they put in a good word for me with their guard. Otherwise, I'd risk my Please career for nothing. You know, fashion. I'm still wondering Remain exactly what you needed those credentials for. You feel like telling me, partner? I usually have a nose for these things, but in your case, it's a mystery. Very frustrating. Whatever the case may be, it's a Apparently worth risking your life over. That's telling me it involves uh, a lot of money. That also means I want in. Ah, so he told you to keep it from me. I see. I wouldn't want you to risk your position with the fleet like I did, so I'll just leave it alone. Anyway, I suppose there's nothing stopping me from rejoining the fleet now. It's been a long time coming. I owe you one, Dover Beach. 
Don't worry, it's not an insult. It's a very old Russian word for comrade. It's what I intend to call you from now on, so get used to it. Nonsense. If there's one universal constant you can depend on, it's that Yevgeny Rokov always makes good on his deals. Always. Well, I suppose this is where we part company. Hopefully the next time we meet, we'll be aboard the key. of nearly every individual in the settled systems are so heavily influenced by what goes on in this building. Hello. Welcome to the... <clears throat> The uh, Galbank Archives. May I see your credentials, please? Oh, uh, no. No, this is just their deep storage facility. All the current records are upstairs in the main facility. This is where, uh, where they put the older data onto long-term servers. Oh, no, none at all. I'm all alone down here. Yeah, yep, completely by myself. Well, I, I guess you're down here too, right? So <laughs> that's two of us now. Sorry, not trying to lie to you or anything. Just, uh, yeah. Just one moment while I verify. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Dombrowski. Welcome, sir. Give me a moment to log your visit and then I'll unseal the archives. No, no. Never. Not at all. I I'm so sorry. Hey, uh, look. Please don't... Don't mention this to my supervisor, okay? She'll give me a low rating, and I'm gonna end up scrubbing floors. Me? No. Look, this is my first day on the job. Just cut me some slack, okay? I can't afford to lose it. I got a wife and kids to feed. Everything checks out. Give me a moment to log your visit, and then I'll unseal the archives. There we go. Have a wonderful day. Have anything of value?
Your buddy Rokov is aboard the key. Told me everything had happened. Yeah, he won't shut up about you. Keeps going on and on. <laughs> now I remember why we kicked his ass out the fleet. Yeah, that'd be a first. All right, neighbor, you've made your point. Well, since you're vouching for Rokov, I guess we can give him another chance. All right. Now that is out of the way, we can move on to the matter at hand. Crix's legacy. Speaking of which, let me see that data you copied from the Galbank archives. Ah, so the Galbank transport went down over Bannock 4. Bannock. Why does that sound familiar? Neva? Yeah, yeah, keep your panties on. I'm looking it up. And... I got it. Bannock 4. Let's see. Damn it. Bannock 4 is an EM class gas giant. We can't even get a ship near the thing without frying every circuit aboard. Approaching that in. Well, in any ship would be suicide. Don't know that one, huh? Well, pick up your pencil. There's gonna be a test on this later. EM class means the planet is given off a ridiculously high amount of electromagnetic radiation. We're talking off the charts here. Fly your ship anywhere near one of these death traps and you'll blow every single circuit on your ship. You'd be dead in space. Get it? Yeah, sure. We'll just wrap your ship in a ton of copper and launch you right in there. That ought to do the trick, right? Both of you shut up and think for a second. I'm sure Creeks hit the same roadblock. All we need to do is figure out how he got around it. This sounds like a goddamn waste of time to me. No, no, this all makes sense. The data says the transport went down over Bannock 4, carrying currency during the Narian War. There were ships fighting across the entire galaxy back then. It's not that hard to believe this one got lost that far out from home. That's the spirit, Rook. That is the essence of the Crimson Fleet that has been slipping away lately. Neva, the Galbank data says the transport had a CBR-27 transponder. Can we track that kind of thing? Pinpoint its exact location? That transponder is military grade. We're talking ultra bit encryption, constantly reshuffling frequencies. We don't have shit like that laying around. But before you get that pissy look on your face, I heard that the UC has been working on a ship signal decryption system called the comm spike. We grab that little beauty and we'll be able to track anything you want. All right, here is the plan, so shut up and listen. Rook, I want you and Neva to put your heads together and get us that comp spike. I don't care if it's mounted at the top of mast. I want it. In the meantime, I'm going to find out more about this EM class gas giant problem. And I think I know just who to ask. Give me a little time to crunch the numbers on the comm spike with Jazz, and I'll point us in the right direction. We do or we die. That's the way Crix did things. And that is the way we should have been doing it for years. It's as simple as that. Yeah? Well, I got news for you. You're no damn picnic to work with either, so deal with it, Rook. All right, that is enough. We are in arm's reach of Crix's legacy, and I don't have time to deal with this kind of bullshit. Now, both of you, get the hell out of here and get to work. All right. Let's get this over with. Follow me. If you have the time, I wish to speak to you. Nova. Bogs in the funk. That'd kill any mood. I'll look 
looking to start something? Cause I'll finish it. Here to upgrade that ship of yours? All right, let's get right to it. Did you get the Earth Savior Award, or am I gonna be very disappointed? Well, that's because you'd be absolutely right. You see, everyone above you in the fleet is making more than you are off the same gig. That's why we're all fighting our way to the top. Understood? Good. Now, you might want to hand over that award before I have you tossed off the key. Just a thought. First of all, this is my section of the key, so I'm going to stand here for as long as I want. And second of all, I know all about that award and your deal with Neva. We don't keep secrets between us. Just throttle down and give her the damn thing already so we can get to work. Well, well, look at that. You followed my directions, and now you're gonna end up with some credits in your pocket. Of course, it would have been more money if you hadn't blabbed about the damn thing to roll call, but that's on you. Anyway, here's your cash. Keep this up, and I might even start respecting you. All right, fleet, we've all got work to do, so let's get to it. Anything ship-related, you're at the right place. Those crabs ain't gonna steal themselves. Thanks for making me look good. I would have had to kill you otherwise. Adventure you can fly away from. Is I would like a chance to talk to you if Don't you are so able. Released. Operations does good work. If any fleet are setting up outposts out there, it's only a matter of time before we take them down. Early reports say your mission on the Siren was a success. I'm sure the commander is pleased. 
So I heard there was a bit of excitement on the Siren of the Stars. Your handiwork, I assume? We told you we'd be keeping tabs on you. So, did you get information for us or not? Yes, and I heard there were no casualties. Excellent work. Except for the ecliptic hit squad that you took down at the Archives. We've taken care of that mess, by the way. Speaking of which, I assume you copied the information from the Galbank's computers. Let me see what you got. So the legacy went down at Bannock 4. Bannock 4? Hmm. Why does that sound familiar, Doft? Bannock 4 is an EM-class gas giant, sir. There isn't a ship in the fleet that could safely get near that type of world. The Bannock system was a site of a significant battle during the Narian War. I had to do a research paper on the subject at the Academy. <sighs> it sounds like you admire that lunatic. I think his gospel's gone straight to your head. Maybe we made a mistake choosing you for this assignment. That's enough, Lieutenant. <sighs> Even if Delgado has an immediate solution to the EM problem, there's still the matter of tracing the Legacy's transponder signal. Of course I am. We don't really have a choice in the matter. There are no shortcuts. The route you're taking to secure Crix's legacy for the Crimson Fleet is the only one at our disposal. If you suddenly change your behavior, they'll know something's wrong. I realize it's difficult, but I urge you to stay the course for now. In the meantime, we'll formulate a plan to ensure the Crimson Fleet doesn't get their hands on that money. I'm not certain. Galbank uses their own proprietary transponder system. Even a ship as old as the Legacy would be a challenge to trace. And even if we could find the ship, we don't have anything strong enough to resist those levels of EM radiation. Unfortunately, we're hampered by the same obstacles as the Crimson Fleet. They have information about the comm spike? <sighs> Damn it. I'm afraid I'm not familiar with that device, sir. No, you shouldn't be familiar with it. It's a highly classified project. It's an advanced signal decryption and tracking device that the UC Navy's been working on for years. How the hell did the Crimson Fleet find out about that? There must be an information leak somewhere, sir. It's the only thing that makes sense. I'll see what I can find out. Fine. This is what we're going to do. You keep playing along and go after the comm spike. Lieutenant Toft and I will see what we can find out about Bannock 4. I don't see the point. The Crimson Fleet apparently has a pipeline of information flowing from somewhere within the UC military. Any attempt to move the comm spike would be a waste of time. We need to play this close to the vest. My superiors are stubborn. They aren't going to authorize an attack on the key based on my flights of fancy, I've been told. We need more evidence that all the Crimson Fleet's plans will result in them actually getting their hands on this fabled cache of credits. Perfect. Just stick with the plan and we'll see who gets to Crix's legacy first. This mission is going to require discretion on a number of fronts. It's good to have you back. What can I do for you? That information is classified, so even what I do know, I can't divulge. Now, I realize as part of this mission, you'll probably end up finding out anyway, but that's besides the point. For the sake of your cover, it's best you work with whatever information the fleet gives you. I know as much as you do. I wasn't briefed on this particular device. But if the fleet wants to trace the Legacy's transponder signal, they'll need something beyond the decryption tech we have currently. If such a device exists, it's likely being developed by the UC.
Well done. Let's see what you found. Tisk tisk. Looks like Mr. Rokoff lied on his application to Trident Luxury Lines about having a clean record. No matter. Next time he jumps from the key, we'll have him picked up. That will be one less fleet captain for us to worry about. Anything else? Are you kidding me? Dombrowski was already making a six-figure salary, and yet he couldn't resist starting an embezzlement scheme. It makes me sick. Ah, oh, it's gonna be an absolute pleasure to throw his butt in prison. Have any more? Okay, fine, fine. I know there's more out there, so keep on it. Yeah, I figured it was only a matter of time before this came up. The reason I didn't bring up the Crimson Fleet is, well, I was one of them. It's something I'm not exactly proud of. I know a great deal about how they operate, what frequencies they use, their encryption techniques, their methods. So in short, yes. He knows quite a bit about my journey. But I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention this conversation to him. Common ground, but not a common beginning. I was recruited out of New Atlantis by Neva Mora. She said I was making a name for myself, and it caught the fleet's attention. I was thrilled. It was a chance at bigger and better scores and gave me a ticket off world. Why the heck would I say no? I raised hell on New Atlantis until someone stood up and took notice. And just like Adler Kemp stuck his neck out and vouched for you, someone else in the fleet did the same thing for me. In fact, it was my idea to send you to Sidonia for your first, well, I suppose you call it a mission. Of course she did. How else would you get an aspiring criminal to blindly follow you into a life of interstellar crime? They took me in. Delgado ran me through the paces on Suvorov, and before I knew it, I was part of the team. Now I was making some serious money. An apartment I boasted about in New Atlantis became a joke. I even made enough to buy my own ship. What do you think? It's a giant ice ball I froze my behind off. We spent a while exploring the surface near the lock, while Delgado laid out his spiel about honor among thieves and all that nonsense. Never got a look inside the facility like you did. I would have agreed with you back then, but when I think about it, I feel like I'm living my best life right now. Everything changed thanks to Commander Akande. The man basically saved my life. I owe him everything. You don't even know the half of it. Look, um... I've already said too much. I promised Commander Akande I wouldn't talk to anyone about this. All you need to take away is that I've literally walked a mile in your shoes, and I appreciate the risks that you're taking. Carry through with this mission. I promise you, I'll be there every step of the way. We'll be here if you need us. See all that chest candy on Commander Ikande? That means he's seen some shit. This mission will be tricky. The comm spike will be heavily guarded. But I trust you can do it without violence. You have your orders. I trust you to follow them. Commanders are given briefings on classified projects, as they may be relevant to our current operations. On rare occasions, we may ask for a project to be pushed through or given more resources. In fact, we recently put in a request to upgrade our shields, which we hope will pay dividends in the near future. Provided it's safe. Very concerned. Which is why when this is over, I'm going to ask Mass for forgiveness, not permission. So to help with that, I ask that you show additional care. Any crimes against UC personnel will bring unwanted attention to both you and the operation. 
it will be far easier to explain to Mast why the Crimson Fleet gained possession of classified material if the Crimson Fleet is no more. As you were. Lieutenant Toft is as organized as they come. You can be sure she'll keep our T's crossed and guns loaded. This mission is going to require discretion on a number of fronts. 